Howdy y'all and welcome to the Dirt Road Grocery Store. We got a simple recipe for you today using venison. Got at the Dirt Road Grocery Store. Now there's only four ingredients. And if you can put ketchup and mustard on the hot dog, you can make this. We've got mustard, of which you will use about a tablespoon. We've got ketchup, of which you will use about two tablespoons. We've got two 28 ounce cans of pork and beans and roughly a pound of ground red meat. I prefer to use as lean as I can get. This is processed whitetail venison. If I could get home ground venison with no fat added, I would, because the less fat you add, the less grease you have to drain off. Now there's some other stuff over here that I'm going to add. It's not necessary or recommended if you're cooking for the kids and they don't like spicy stuff. My kids have been acclimated to eating spicy food. Now, I'm going to make my version of this as sort of a sweet chili, just like my mama did. And uh, you don't need to, though. Just these four ingredients make a good hot dish for you. It's good for leftovers. You eat it cold as a sandwich, however you like. Real good one for you, and we're going to bring it in here and cook it up right now. Roughly one pound of ground red meat. The leaner, the better. If you like... If you like this dish, go ahead and have it made at the processor when you have your meat made. Have it ground with no fat added. It's not necessary. Adding fat to venison is kind of pointless because the fat is taken from beef. And beef, once you get used to eating good clean deer meat, it's kind of gamey. Deer meat's not. We're going to chop this up. And get it good and brown. Now you remember when I was describing this earlier, we were talking about a tablespoon of mustard, a couple of tablespoons of ketchup, a couple of cans of pork and beans. That's all there is to it. I'm not going to give measurements for any of these spices because I don't measure anything. Now go ahead and get it good and brown. Turn that turn that pan up high. You can turn it down to medium low once you get your beans in, but we're going to do everything else on high. Now you see here we're burning it on down and there's not a lot of liquid in that. If this was regular old ground beef, it'd be swimming in grease and water. That's because they add water to ground beef to make it way more. So they can get more money out of you without actually giving you product. Very little extra liquid in here. Good old deer meat. So we have some, some little bit of grease in there from the beef fat that was added by the processor. You see it there. Just a little bit. That's not even worth putting in a colander to drain out as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to get it out with an napkin. If you're doing this with old ground round, ground chuck, ground beef from the grocery store, go ahead and get your colander out. Go ahead and get your colander out and drain all that stuff off. It'll taste better. It'll be better for you, I reckon. But that was it. There it went. Had we ground this beef, this uh, venison at home, <coughs> It wouldn't even have that. Okay. It's getting brown. I'm going to spice mine. Now. Can't give you measurements on it because I don't use them. If you're unaccustomed to spicing meat. There we go. You can go by color. If you don't like much spice, you don't want to see much color of spice on it. If you like a lot of spice, you want to see a heavy color of stuff on it. If you're cooking for children, I strongly encourage you to let the children help you taste test as you go. And they'll tell you what they can stand. And it also teaches them to cook, which is very handy. And once they get up in those teenage years, they can do the cooking. All right. 
Boy, that's smelling good. Well, we put some chili powder on there. I like a little more chili mess. I imagine cumin. You don't have to. If you don't have adventurous eaters, it's probably a bad idea. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> I love the smell of cumin. All right, let's get it browned up a little bit. You didn't have to do any of that stuff, so you were a step ahead of me. Don't cook your spices so much till you cook the oil out, because then you'll lose the flavor and you'll have wasted your spice. All right, pork and beans. This is one of those dishes that goes a little further. Your pork and beans, your pork and beans make the meat go further. You just serve it with old white bread and butter, and that's all. One problem with this dish is if you're the fella in the house and you cook it first, and you make it taste good, and you don't know what the measurements were, they're going to say you don't want to cook it. And that's good. Well, I don't know how to cook. All right. Turn your heat down. About medium. Mix it together. Don't mix too much. You mix too much, you're going to mash up your pork and beans. They're already soft, and then it'll get kind of, uh, it still tastes good. It just doesn't look quite so appetizing. All right. I told you a tablespoon of mustard. I told a story. That's how much I like. How much ketchup? I ain't gonna find no. All right. <clears throat> I like mustard. Now, we're gonna get a child in here to taste this and make sure it tastes right. Rick! Grab your spoon and come over and tell me if this tastes right. Ketchup, more mustard? I don't really know. Does it taste good? Yeah. Just like you like it? Mm -hmm. Boy, we got it right the first time. Well, that's cowboy stew. That's what it looks like. And we may give you a serving suggestion here to show you how it's done anyway. Then again, we may just eat it all. So I'll hit it off at the pass. Just put it in a bowl with bread and butter. Uh, old Nettie's favorite way to eat it is she'll put sour cream on bread, then put that on top and eat it like SOS. Bone apple tea. Well, I hope you enjoy it. That was the Dirt Road Grocery Store. Bye now. Keep on the sunny side. Always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side. Of life.